Hello and welcome. We are about to now wrap up in the next one hour, taking a look at all that's happened and what's been a dramatic day of counting. Clear victory for the BJP in three states, but that fourth state, Delhi, is in a really unprecedented situation. You have a position right now where actually two parties could potentially form the government, but neither of them plans to try. Maybe. Hi Vikram, well what we're going to look at largely in the next few minutes is what could happen next in Delhi as Vikram says that really is the most interesting state to call right now but it's also been quite a seesaw as far as Chhattisgarh was concerned for most of the day so what will the impact of the other three states and Delhi of course be on the national mood and the general elections that are coming up we'll have all the reactions and analysis for you with Sachin Pilot, Ravi Shankar Prasad and Shazia Ilmi in just a moment. Okay, but let's first quickly sum up for you in case for some reason you haven't been anywhere near your TV set, you want to know what exactly happened. So here's in a nutshell what happened today during the day. Two states, an absolute convincing landslide and a sweep for the BJP, which were of course Madhya Pradesh and Rajasthan. Here are the final results if you like. Uh, Madhya Pradesh, 165 seats for the BJP, absolute landslide, even better than what they had done last time and they did pretty well last time. So, Madhya Pradesh, a complete sweep for the BJP. Rajasthan also a landslide victory for the BJP. 162 seats there, up 84. And if you look at the vote share and the vote change which actually happened in Rajasthan, it was really quite stunning. And there you have it, the BJP, 46% vote to Congress, 34%, others getting 20, and a big swing there in favour of uh, the BJP. Turning to Chhattisgarh, as Didi was saying, it was up and down for a large part of the day, actually. It was up, it was down, all over the place. But finally, it proved to be a rather comfortable and easy victory for the, the BJP. 49 there for the BJP, 39 for the Congress and others at 2. So at 3-0, very clearly in those states. And then we come to Delhi, which ended up like this. 32 seats for the BJP alliance, uh, Akali Dal there also. 32. Aam Aadmi Party has 28, Congress has 8, and I'll just freeze on this graphic for a minute because look at the permutations and combinations. As it stands, the BJP and its allies have 32. Even if the two others support the BJP, which they won't because one of them is JDU and he, he's not going to do that, um, the BJP cannot get to the 35-36 mark. Aam Aadmi Party potentially can if the Congress or one of the others supports it, or Congress would have to support it in addition. But the Aam Aadmi Party is saying we don't want to take the Congress's support. So what exactly happens is a big question that we're going to spend some time discussing. But before we do that, take a look at the vote share and the vote change. And of course, the story here is an absolutely sensational debut by the Aam Aadmi Party. Just yesterday, we were hearing Aam Aadmi Party leaders saying that even if you get to 20%, it will be great. They did much better than that, 30%. Now look at the Congress, down to 25, a clear number three. Um, dropping 16% from last time. So, a really stunning debut there. Absolutely, that's probably going to be one of the big headlines in the newspapers tomorrow. Not just the way the Aam Aadmi Party has done, but Arvind Kedriwal himself, he's been called the giant killer since he defeated Sheila Dixit in her New Delhi constituency. But what's going to happen next in Delhi? That's what we're going to focus on first. I think we can go across uh, to our guests this evening. We've got Union Minister Sachin Pilot who joins us tonight, who's been one of the party's leading faces, the Congress party's leading faces in Rajasthan. He's the MP from Ajmer. Also with us, a senior BJP leader Ravi Shankar Prasad. Shazia Ilmi of the Aam Aadmi Party is with us tonight and Shazia, you had a heartbreaking loss today by just uh, uh, literally 300 plus votes. So we're going to talk to you about that as well. In fact, let me ask you about that first. Uh, how many votes was it at the end of the day? I think it was 340 or so. Uh, very, very close for you. 324. 324. That's Ouch. very close. Ouch. But what a fight, what a fight that the AAP has put up. You know, Shazia, everyone's asking, we asked Arvind this today as well, you've decided to take a principal stand on not supporting any party to form the government in Delhi. But, you know, there are those who will say that this was a strong mandate. There were a, a number of, a large number of voters who came out, who came forward and voted for, for the Aam Aadmi Party, that if now we go into another election, uh, you would, in a sense, be doing a disservice to those who did come out and exercise their franchise. And can you realistically in this world... Uh, say no to any coalition at all? You know, it is uh, indeed the prerogative of the, of the single largest party, which is BJP. Uh, they, they have a, a, a margin of four extra, uh, extra seats more than us, <coughs> or the largest coalition as per the SR Bomai recommendations. 
So I think it will be BJP, uh, BJP's call now to form the government. We are happy to sit in the opposition, but we do not want to tie up with either BJP or Congress. We fought this election purely on principle and against the coalition and complicity of, of Congress and BJP. Our fight is not just to be in power, but to actually challenge the status quo and to improve on the system that seems to fail the people. And Sorry. we've gone with those very real issues to the people and they've supported us on that basis. Right. If we were to join hands with Congress, we'll lose their trust and their credibility. So, <clears throat> Shazi, I get that if it's a coalition or if you are supporting the Congress. But look, just tell us hypothetically, tomorrow the Congress party says, we will not vote against an Aam Aadmi Party government right now. They don't want another election right now. So we will not vote, bring down an Aam Aadmi Party government. We're giving it unconditional issue-based support from outside. Theoretically, 28 plus 8 takes you to 36. You could have Arvind K. Jival as the Chief Minister of Delhi later this week. Um, how, what, what are you going to do in that situation? You're not asking them for support. They're coming out and they're telling you that we, we won't vote you down. Well, indeed, we've got some feelers and also very public ones at that. Uh, but I think it will not do us, uh, do us good to go for that kind of support because we will be like any other party uh, working on um, poaching, horse trading or looking at different ways to keep up with, uh, with needs of political expediency. I think it's important to stay principled, to stay firm and say we're ready to sit in the opposition uh, and call the bluff of those, these two parties, which okay. have been uh, not but responsive but Mr. Ravi to Shankar people's Prasad needs. To, to respond to that, and Mr. Prasad. As, as for Congress, but, but how, but Mr. Prasad, how do you see see that? The, uh, how do you see the Aam Aadmi Party stand, uh, or this principle stand, uh, uh, which, which they are taking and, and saying that they would not uh, offer support to to the BJP? What do you see happening in Delhi, sir? You're a leading lawyer as well. What are the possible options? Well, Nidhi, I'll come to Delhi very quickly. But please allow me to say one thing, the extent of victory of BJP in these four states. Uh, nearly 589 Vidhan Sabha seats in contest, the BJP is winning 404, nearly 68%. The Congress is winning 127, close to 22.5%. Okay? Third time Madhya Pradesh, nearly two-thirds majority. Chhattisgarh, my dear state, where I was in charge. Again, the same number of seats we are winning, which we have won in 2008. Again, because of performance of Shiraz Singh Chauhan and Raman Singh. The surprising is Rajasthan, Congress party below 21, a sitting government. And the BJP almost on course to get a three-fourth majority. Therefore, enormity of this victory has not to be underestimated. It is an enormous no vote against Congress party and pro-BJP in two states within in power. In Delhi also, while I compliment the Amadmi party for the showing they have given, and I also uh, can say that Shajia is there on your show, that she gave a very good fight. Hard luck, she lost. But the larger issue is we are the largest party. And 33, Akali won. We are missing halfway mark only by two, two seats. Now the point is, what is going to happen? Here I would say that regardless of the good showing by the Ahmadmi party, the people of the state of Delhi again cho chose the BJP as the biggest party to represent them. We could not cross the halfway mark very narrowly. That is a hard fact. Now, as you rightly said, Nidhi, what is going to happen now? Well, government has to be there. Maybe they have got every right to go for an alternative <coughs> polity, but they need to come in government to fulfill the promises which they have assured the people. So there has to be a government. Ravi, can I just ask you, this is Vikram here. Just wanted to check one thing from you though. Now, we've just heard, and I'll play that again for you, all of you right now. We just heard Mr. Harshwardhan saying very clearly, and other BJP leaders as well, look, we may be at 32 right now. We are not going to try and form the government. We do not have the numbers, even if we get the support of the other two, which you will not. Uh, there's no, no question of getting support from Aam Aadmi Party or from the Congress. So, we don't want to set up a minority government. We would prefer to sit in opposition. Is that the stance that the BJP is taking? Because if it is, we have an unprecedented situation in Delhi and KPS Tulsi is going to be joining us to talk the constitutional aspects of this, where yeah. neither you <coughs> nor the Aam Aadmi Party is saying that you intend to try and form the government. Well, I haven't heard what Mr. Harshwadhan has said. Should I'm I just claim for, for you time. then, Ravi, then you can I'm perhaps a, comment. I, I, I'll just I, I, blame I, for you if you like. <laughs>
uh, I'll just pray I, for you. I'm hopping from channel to channel, therefore I haven't uh, heard about it. But let me explain both the legal position and the political position. Uh, as, a, as a student of law and constitution, uh, Vikram, you may know there are precedents. Largest party is invited or the largest pre poll alliance which is here in the case BJP and Akali Dal. Then you have been the decisions of presidents and the governor apart from Bomai judgment which I have mentioned earlier also that these are precedents as to how the governor or the president as the case may be has to take initiative for government formation in the event you have not a very clear verdict. Though a close word in favor of BJP, but I, not a clear majority. I completely agree with you, Ravi. Ravi, I completely agree with you. That's what conventional politics is. But here in Delhi, we seem to be having this rather unprecedented situation where that's exactly the logic that could have been used. The BJP should be there before the Lieutenant Governor tomorrow saying we are the single largest party, invite us to form the government. But I'll just play for you now what Mr. Harshwadhan just told NDTV a short while back. Let's just listen to this. This is what Mr. Harshwadhan said, echoed to some extent by Arun Jaitley as well. Here's what Harshwadhan said. When I went with you on your rally, I could see that you were doing well. And um, uh, you were obviously aware of the support you were getting. However, in the end, you're just this three seats short number one, and number two, there's a 2% swing away from the BJP. I know you're a man of, uh, I've watched you for years, you don't, you're not hungry for power. Are you really going to try and form a minority government or do horse trading? What, 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 is, what are your thoughts right now? Uh, I don't have that number of 36. Uh, 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 I, I really can't be part of any government formation in Delhi. So, but I'll continue to serve the people uh, with my utmost dedication and sincerity. Actually, I am uh, qu quite astounded by what you're saying because it's, it is, uh, you are a man of principles in other words. You're not going to do any horse trading and behind the scenes maneuvering and the, what was that? The Kamal. Mm. Operation the Kamal. Operation, Operation Kamal. Kamal. Uh, but that means, are we talking about President's rule coming into Delhi? I don't, I really can't uh, sort of comment. I don't know what's going to happen. But I'm finding myself in a helpless uh, uh, type of situation where uh, I had promised uh, to give them a, uh, an honest, uh, transparent administration. We had uh, dreamt so many things for the people of Delhi. We wanted to fulfill all those promises. But since I don't have the numbers, I can't stake my claim for uh, forming a government in Delhi. So I really don't know what's going to happen. Uh, let me give you a hypothetical situation that a whole lot of uh, four or five or six Congress people come to you and say, we want to switch. <coughs> All right, so that essentially is what Mr. Harshwardhan said and Arun Jaitley also back. So, Mr. Ravi Shankar Prashad, what you're saying, Bomai judgment, what normally happens in politics, single largest party, he says, I don't want to do any of that. I, have, I don't have the numbers. We're not going to form the government. We'll sit in opposition. Shazia is saying the same thing. So what do we do in Delhi now? Well, Vikram, I told you as a caveat that I have been hopping from channel to channel. I don't know what the whole position is about. I explained this position purely as a student of yeah. India's parliamentary Correct. conventions and a student of India's constitution. Okay, okay. let me get, let, let me get Sachin Pilot in uh, on that then. Uh, Sachin Pilot... Uh, what do you think of this principal stand then that the Aam Army Party is taking? taking? I mean, we, we've discussed the Congress's defeat in Delhi all day. But the situation that Delhi finds itself in where no one is in a position to form a government and no one's talking about even covertly the traditional horse trading that could have taken place. What, what, where, do you think we're headed for a fresh election then? Difficult to say. I think the last person you should be asking is me because the Congress has done pretty badly in Delhi. And we only have eight members, so I don't think we have a role to play at all. The people have voted for the Congress to sit in the opposition, and that's uh, it's clear as day, that mandate, uh, and we see it. So what the Lieutenant Governor decides to do is up to him. He'll consult his constitutional experts, his legal experts, uh, and then the situation may unfold in the next few days. Uh, it's premature for anyone, really, in, at least in this discussion, to make comments affirmatively. But do you think or that the Aam Aadmi Party can happen? stay away from alliances and from coalitions, <laughs> especially if they look to have a, a, a bigger national role going from here? Do you think that they can afford to say that we're not, not going to have alliances? Why not? In fact, that's what they've been saying, and, and I hope they stick to the stand because uh, that's one issue on which people have given them their trust and voted for them in such large numbers that they don't want to be, you know, doing the traditional politics. And, uh, you know, they've done pretty well for a first showing, so I compliment them. 
But okay. now the real job starts now actually. The up till and um, up until now was the campaigning and electioneering and, and making speeches. Now comes the real politics of it. And I hope they are able to handle it with the kind of uh, you know uh, intensity and the responsibility that they've displayed in the campaign. So these are testing times for the Aam okay. Party and I wish them the very best. Okay, I just want to come back to the two legal to the two legal minds whom we see here. Mr. Tulsi here also a constitutional expert and then Ravi, I want to just come back to you. <coughs> Mr. Tulsi, tell us about this situation now, which may arise in Delhi. One party with 32 seats says, we are not going to try because we don't have the numbers. Second party with 28 says, we're not going to take support from any of the others. So we're not going to try and form the government either. Obviously, the Congress will feel really foolish trying to form the government now with seven or eight, and neither of them is supporting it. So what happens? Is it president's rule? Is it fresh elections? What? What I would like to say is firstly congratulate uh, both the BJP as well as the Aam Aadmi Party for spectacular uh, success at the hustings. I would like to say that they have now an obligation to the people. They have to respect the verdict and they have an obligation to give the people a government. <coughs> it, is, it is their obligation to hammer out a solution. Whatever may have been the stand taken during election hearing, after the verdict, you have to fulfill your obligation to give people a government. Otherwise, it will be a breach of faith. And if it's a breach of faith and there is no government, it will be really sad because you can't impose election after election on the people. This is, this is just not on... You have to. But why, Mr. You have Tulsi, to they have a right that to take a principled stand as well, and even Sachin Pilot has has, has complimented them on that. They they've taken a principled position yeah. on this, uh, and 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 it's actually a change in Indian politics to see that. What's wrong with that? No, no. When when you come into the election era, election field, and you get a certain verdict, and if you are the single largest party you have an obligation to form the government. And if you cannot form the government on your own, you have to work out alliances. You have to work out everything has got to be explored and re-election is the last option. All right, so let and me throw that to Mr. Ravi really Shankar Prashad then. Because Mr. Ravi Shankar Prashad, at the end of the day, what Mr. Tulsi says will first apply, I guess, to the BJP because the BJP very clearly is the single largest party. You have four seats more than uh, the Aam Aadmi Party does. So the first question will come to the BJP saying, you have 32, there's no clear indication that you're, you, you could theoretically try and form a minority government. So would it be, at the end of the day, we, we all appreciate the principal stance that Mr. Harshwadhan has taken right now, but by tomorrow, day after, once some introspection has been done, do you think the BJP will say, look, at the end of the day, we do, may not have a choice but to try and form the government, even if it's a minority government? Well, Vikram, I'm sorry, I cannot make any comment at all. The situation is as it is. Uh, I must compliment Dr. Harshwardhan because don't forget if Sheila Dixit has lost by 25,000 votes, Dr. Harshwardhan has won his constituency by 43,000 votes. He's a person of great principles, great integrity and a very profound image. And I need to salute him because he has been fair enough to tell Dr. Roy, who just played that out, that I am not game for it if the number is not there. Maybe that is an indication of a new kind of a hope in India's politics. Then complement it. Surely, uh, let us see how it works out in Delhi. Or but in speaking for myself also, let me just complete. Sure, sure, speaking Mr. for Sorry. myself also, a, any kind of a fair, honest coalition should always be permissible. But this politics of higher arms and gaya arms and people quoting their prices, maybe it is time to say goodbye to that. What is wrong with that? Let well, there be a beginning. That, that's good to hear. Because that's good to, to hear. But <laughs> because let, I just because, wanted to shift for a no, moment no, no, to yeah, the national I, picture, I would, though, because I we have that. Yeah, Shazi, we, we do I mean, because we have both Sachin Pilot and Ravi Shankar Prasad here with us. Sachin, on the issue of of <coughs> you know the national impact this has on the Congress in particular, you have just five or six months left for the general elections, and today Rahul Gandhi was talking about this transformation and this revamp within the party that he was determined to undertake. Do you think you have enough time? to change things between now and the general election? Are you worried? We don't have an option. I think these election results have been rather disappointing. And uh, I think the extent of loss, especially in Delhi and Rajasthan, is extremely worrying. 
um, uh, I accept the, the verdict of the people with all humility, but I think it's incumbent upon us as a political force in these states to regroup, retool ourselves, to understand what went wrong, and then fix things uh, as quickly as possible. I think we have elections in five, six months later. Um, and I think we're, we're, we need to do uh, some stock taking and some introspection. But what and do you think went wrong? You know, can, I, can I just say such, s such a stock taking introspection, <laughs> that's fine. We also heard uh, Rahul Gandhi's talking about, you know, we're going to shake up things. We've been talking about, I've been talking about it inside the party, now I intend to do it. To which I guess the uh, obvious question people will ask is that, well, why hasn't it been done till now? A lot of time has passed. By now, the Congress seems to have lost the faith of large sections of this country, if, if not a majority of them. Isn't it now really time that any of these changes that had to be made are actually made? I, I think I need to point out, Vikram, that we've had elections before. And the Congress party has won elections in Karnataka, in Uttarakhand, in Himachal Pradesh, third time in Assam, so on and so forth. So we've won and lost elections. It's not. It's wrong to say that we must write off the party because we lost two or three states in these recent elections. Having said that, uh, you know the verdict is there. It's the writing on the wall. We all see it. Uh, but you know the party has been undergoing a transformation since Mr. Gandhi became vice president. The transformation has been complete. I don't think it's 100% uh, successful to the point yet. It takes time for a party as old and as established as the Congress to change its you know its way of thinking, its processes. It's happened, but I think we need to now expedite that process. And we need to hear on the ground, I think, if there is any sort of disconnect uh, that is happening between our workers or with, with the electorate and our, and our party, then we need to fix that. And I think we have within ourselves enough uh, strength and resilience to be able to overcome that. And whatever impediments are on the way, uh, we'll be up to the challenge to meet them and make sure that we win the trust of the people again. Mr. Prasad, uh, it's been a phenomenal day for the BJP and throughout the day we've heard senior leaders like yourself also talking about the local factors that were responsible for the BJP's wins as well as the fact that Mr. Modi's been your star campaigner and that all these factors together were important players in all of this. But there are those who also caution the BJP against overplaying the Modi factor at this stage saying that given the fact that Mr. Modi campaigned so hard for instance in Delhi and Chhattisgarh also where the results haven't been quite up to your expectations the national picture could you know, still be different. What happens in Madhya Pradesh isn't what will necessarily happen in Uttar Pradesh. So is there, is there a certain caution also with which the BJP is proceeding over the next few months? You're not overconfident, I'm sure, about the Modi factor either. Not the least, <clears throat> but we're also fair enough to give the credit which is due to him. Uh, why me, uh, Nidhi? Uh, Sundra ji has given credit to him. Mr. Raman Singh has said that our governance was there, but the way he campaigned and having extensively campaigned in all the five states, I have seen as to how Mr. Modi was able to enthuse the young voters and also put the entire things in a very clear, clear perspective. You know, I am nobody to advise Congress party today, but uh, Sachin is a good friend. Congress party is an important party for the country for the sake of democracy. Let me just flag three quick issues. Why Congress party is not able to understand the enormity of its loss? The problem is this, that Congress party suffered double whammy. More anti-incumbency of the government of India. And the people were asking a question repeatedly, are you going to govern Chhattisgarh and Madhya Pradesh in the way you are governing India? The second is a serious ideological issue and I am provoking this debate in the presence of my very good friend Sachin Pilot. Congress party legitimately thinks that we may or may not do anything, but we'll come with some legislation, give them that we have roti diya, hum aapko khana de rahe hain, we are giving food security, and I think we will win. Sorry, people are not buying this logic. India is changing. India needs good governance. India needs growth. It is an aspirational India. People of the country and young particularly feels we deserve better. This deserving better is reflecting in a scenario where those CMs who are performing well, are being rewarded handsomely and those who are not are being shown the door. That is how I read this present election. If the Congress party is willing to well, introspect, think, good luck to them. I thought I must give this advice. Such today. populism doesn't work. Yes, That's what I, Ravi Shankar Prasad no, just I, said. First of all, no, I, I want to first thank Ravi Shankar Prasad ji for giving his uh, constructive criticism. I think today is uh, perhaps the most appropriate day to give your uh, wisdom on what the party should and should not do in the Congress party. I very humbly like to submit to Mr. Prasad that while it's okay that uh, you have won and I, and I congratulate you personally as well as your party for having done Thank really you Sachin, thank you. But what, but, but Mr. Prasad, what I'm not ready to do is uh, I will listen to your criticism but I'm not ready to roll over and play dead 
and say that you will walk all over me because I think we have a lot of strength left in the Congress party to come back. Uh, and I say this because it's not about the populist schemes. It is your chief minister, Mr. Ram Dr. Raman Singh in Chhattisgarh, who is called the Chawal Baba, who has been giving rice at one kg a kilo. And that's what has been touted about by the BJP all over the country. So, and, and it is the BJP, it, Mr. Advani, who has, who has praised the Narega program in the United Nations, saying it's a fantastic program for people to get a job. I think if you work for entitlement for the poor people, nobody is against that. I personally believe that we have to go hand in hand with growth, development, investment, job opportunity, as well as taking affirmative action for the poor and the have not. This is a large country, so you cannot be uh, blind to the needs of the poor people. At the same time, we have to look at aspirational India and make sure our policies are, are uh, inculcating both those aspects. Okay. But this election, I don't think really is going to be reflective of how India might vote six months later. Because like I said, Mr. Modi has also campaigned in Karnataka, he's campaigned in Uttarakhand and in Himachal Pradesh. The results well, have not been that great. He okay. campaigned in Delhi. Where was the way for the BJP in New Delhi?